how do you handle your customer complaints? Customer complaints are criticisms that are launched against your product or service by a customer or potential customer uh, in an effort to elicit a response from you. This response could be anything from just correcting the action to um, trying to receive some some form of benefit or discount out of it and for the customer. Um, complaints are, are very important because it allows you to uh, critique your business and to correct the mistakes that you're making within your business and also to monitor the performance of your employees that are that are uh, doing the business for you. But they can also be a point of contention because complaints are almost always emotionally charged. Uh, there's always something going on in the customer, whether it be stress or you know a, a fear of, of loss or something like that that will create a situation where these complaints are going to be coupled with this emotion. And it is up to you to kind of navigate this situation and avoid uh, the emotional side of it and get down to the part where you're fixing the business and making the customer happy. It's your job to, to navigate the complaint and get to the point to where you're getting to the root of the problem, fixing it, and making the customer happy. And again, th this can come in a whole lot of different styles and, and, and resolutions, but knowing how to field a complaint and and get the information out of it is is probably one of the most important parts of it because without that none of the other stuff is going to fall into place you're not going to be able to correct it you're not going to be able to fix it and you're really not going to make the customer happy so what i want to talk about is how you feel the complaint from a customer that will allow you to get the information from them and to make them at least at ease so that you can continue on the way and, and, and bring a positive out of the negative of the complaint. Now, the first thing that usually happens with a complaint is uh, the customer will make contact with, with someone within the, the, uh, the, the company and will voice their concerns. If you're not the person that can correct this, if you're not the person that should be fielding the complaint, you don't need to be fielding the complaint. Now, that's not to say that you have to be the boss or you have to be the, the, the supervisor or the head employee or whatever. The employee that made the mistake can absolutely correct the mistake and they can field the complaint to do so. When you receive the initial complaint, introduce yourself let the 
let the person giving the complaint know who you are and the position that you hold and that you have the authority to correct the problem or to at least feel the complaint. This is important because the person who is upset really doesn't want to waste their time with someone who can't fix their problem. And if you're not that person, then you're not fixing their problem. So after you've introduced yourself and, and you let them know who you are and that you can handle their, their, their complaint and their problem, the next step is to listen. Now listening isn't just shutting your mouth and, and, and allowing the person to talk. What you, the goal of this is to take in the pertinent information. So what you need to be doing is repeating back parts that are important so that they understand that you are listening and that you're comprehending what they're saying. And also act, asking probative questions that are not accusatory. If someone, if one of your employees ran over a customer's mailbox and they're calling you to complain that your, your guy ran over my mailbox, again, they're upset, they're, they're uh, agitated, they're in a state, they don't want to lose money, they don't want to be in a position where they're going to have to pay for the mailbox, and you fire off, how do you know my employee ran over your mailbox? that's gonna do absolutely zero to fix the problem. Because what you're doing is you're agitating that customer to a point to where you, you know, you're, you're adding to the problem and creating the, the stress that, that they already have. Um, what time did it, did it occur? Um, did, did, you, did you see it? Were, were there people outside? Was anyone hurt? Is there any other property damage? Uh, did you see what side of the vehicle got hit? Did you see which vehicle my employee was in? All of these can can be used to identify and also at the same time, they're not accusatory. They're not asking them, you know, uh, to prove their, their point. It's, it's placing you in an environment where you're gathering the information you need. have not admitted to any kind of fault or guilt your employee has not admitted any fault or guilt all you've done is gathered information you have collected all the pertinent information that you need and the evidence that you needed to make whatever decisions this also will include gathering information that you may need to solve the problem for instance you, we'll go back to your mailbox incident. If, if you run over someone's mailbox, you need to know what it's going to cost to replace that. So you need to go ahead and, and, and go online and figure out, go to one of the Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever and find out how much a mailbox is or a mailbox pole or a stand or, you know, whatever, whatever parts you need to fix it and uh, gather, you know, whatever information you need to fix uh, the problem. Then when you uh, call back to the customer, the first thing that you're going to need to do at that point is apologize. Mr. or Mrs. Smith, we're sorry. We, we looked into the incident that you reported to us where our guy accidentally ran over your mailbox. And what we would like to first and foremost say is that we have you know, we apologize. Normally our guys are much more attentive to their surroundings and things that were going on. There's really no excuse. We've addressed it with our employee and he is also wants to uh, offer his sincerest apologies as well. What we are proposing to offer you is that we can either re send a repairman out to fix your mailbox and we will you know, replace the pole or whatever the damage is, or we will issue you a check for the amount of 
$250 so that you can get it fixed. Period. At that point, this is what you offer. This is where you're going to stand. This is what you're going to give. Um, that's where you're going to go. So, I guess what the most important uh, uh, advice that I can give you at this point is, is that you need to find out how far your, your, your apology and, and retribution is going to go. And then they go to that point and that's where you leave it. Don't let them talk you into doing more. Well, that was a super special mailbox that, you know, cost was my, belonged to my grandmother's great niece and, and it was hand crafted by her uncle in, in the forges of Mordor. None of that, no, no, I'm sorry. We, we're here to offer this amount of money, I'm sorry. That's where you stand. If your problem is with service, replace it with a discount or uh, or, or, or more service, an offer of, of, of discount or more service. If your, your problem is outside of service, then obviously you want to go with some other, some other actions. When I say that, what I mean is if you are a plumber and, you know, the problem is, is that, you know, your guy was, it never showed up for the appointment or, or, you know, he made a mess and didn't complete the job in a timely manner and you know whatever the problems are then what you need to do is because all that is service oriented and all that 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 lies in your service offer them the service discount offer them extended service to to help fix that if he ran over your mailbox on the way in and out you know fixing fixing their 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 plumbing problem because you ran over their mailbox may not even be an option especially if it was the neighbor's mailbox or if it was you know they're not you've created another problem they had a leaky faucet and now they got a broke down uh you know mailbox you need to fix the mailbox um so just kind of remember that that if it's service or, or or your product related you need to fix it with that if it's not then fix it with money or or, or fix the the original problem that they have my only other caution is is that there uh, there exists now a type of customer who understand the dynamics of 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 complaints and they know that it it is a negotiation and they're going to enter into this with that in mind. So you need to understand that you're going to go to a certain point and then you're going to cut it off. You are never going to make every customer 100% happy, especially if you're, they're unhappy with your sales or service that, that you've done. So trying to correct the their problem is never going to happen because they, they just don't want it to be right. They want to try to get something out of you. So again, go to the point that you're going to go to. And, and then at that point, you need to start uh, doing things to, to mitigate your your uh, the, the, the further damage that they're going to do because it's probably going to come with things like um, re poor reviews um, and things like that. On, on the on the topic of reviews, you need to make sure that you respond to your reviews, the, especially the negative ones, and give your side of the story because when people read a review. And they see this outlandish complaint that is, is launched against you. And it's coupled with an explanation that sounds legitimate or sounds like something that would be logical. Then it gives them credence to believe you and understand that there are just some people out there that are going to complain for the simple fact that they like to complain or they're going to complain because they want to get something out of it. So make sure you do that to kind of mitigate some of your loss or, or, or some of the problems that, that are involved there. And, uh, you know, it'll, it'll make it a lot easier on you. Last thing before I let you guys go, 
don't let it get to you. It, it, all of these are moments in time, okay? Take the complaint, grow, uh, and make sure you 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 do some paperwork on this, and 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 in that way you can use that to correct the problems, and and you know you have that solid piece of paper that you can kind of go back to. If you have a problem employee that's just running over every mailbox in the neighborhood, you're going to need that paperwork anyway to, to do corrective actions against them. But also, you can use that to kind of show uh, future employees and, and, and other things that, that you guys are, you know, these are the problems that we're having. We've had, you know, three mailboxes run over in the last 18 months. We need to do a better job. Oh my God, the sun! <laughs> got an eyeser. Now I got a beard. <laughs> a sun beard. 